Um, it was pretty interesting year because you have some you know interesting games on a lot of platforms which didn't even exist. You know, until recently, I'm playing you know a lot of iPhone games. Um, I'm playing a game called 100 Rogues on the iPhone, which is like sort of a roguelike for but for the rest of us, you know, a very accessible roguelike. I played a ton of that. Um, I play a game called Dungeon Solitaire on the iPhone is really good, um, sort of like Magic the Gathering meets Solitaire. Um, I'm playing Dungeon Quest, uh, Dragon Quest Nine on, on my DS. Uh, a lot of that. Um, I think actually the Lego Harry Potter is, and I'm not a huge Harry Potter guy, but I think it's a really well executed game. Those guys are really are really uh, good at what they do. Um, um, Battlefield Two I thought was really cool. I, I really enjoyed that. It's sort of an eclectic year. There's a lot of a, lo a lot of a lot of sort of strange stuff coming out, and you know, and then like you know, Final Fantasy Thirteen was kind of interesting. Um, and, um, you know, I'm looking forward, there's a lot of stuff in the second half of the year I'm really looking forward to, like Civilization V, like Elemental. Um, there's a lot, it, it just, it's, a, it's a less of a blockbuster year, more of a, like a lot of interesting title year, um, interesting little title um, year. And um, um, Majesty, I enjoyed, enjoyed Majesty too. Um, you know, a lot of weird Eastern Europe PC games I've been playing a lot of. Um, I'm, you know, I, 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 was, I admired a lot of what they're trying to do. It's. I'm not a fan. I never have been a fan of of, of sort of the genre of, of adventure games, um, and it's it, it's a little different than a lot of adventure games. But I mean, games where there is the entire game is there's a set of preconceived things you do without sort of a game mechanic. You know, like an, a a skill mechanic sort of tying those things together. And um, so it had sort of two strikes with me to start with. But I think it was it was trying to do really interesting things, and I, I like that they try to. You know, put it. You know, start in this very domestic setting. Um, you know, you start by taking a shower, and you know, these are very relatable things. You know, you're not starting as like sort of a space marine. You know, doing something crazy, and I and I admire that. It just, it just as a game, uh, I'm not as interested in figuring out what the game designer wants me to do um, versus sort of having a place. But all games have some of that, or or, or sometimes a great deal of that. But I like sort of the skill space, you know, in, investigating the skill space. And so, you know, it, and it's, it's, we sort of work somewhere in between. You know, we obviously there are things you have to do that, you know, quests and stuff that the designers predetermine. Um, but there's also, you know, the sh you know, for us making first person shooters, the shooting and the, you know, and the, and the, and the character decisions and all that stuff, which I really like. I think you see, you know, and, so, and it happens every few years, you know, Battlefield, you know, was an example of somebody, there's just, you know, deathmatch and capture the flag at that point of, of, of you know, their mechanic, you know, their, their strategic territory mechanic was something profound. You look at Left 4 Dead, you know, this notion of how co-op co could work in that experience and all the mechanics they did for that in terms of, um, you know, how the, the characters spoke to each other dynamically was very profound and how they took a very iconic notion, you know, the sort of zombie apocalypse, and, you know, from probably seen, you know, we, we thought about doing a game like that for a while, and we said, we're, I'm already a fan of that, but they had all these profound ideas that nobody had done before. Um, the horde, you know, the horde mode in Gears of War um, was, I think, a profound idea, a profound co-op idea, um, and you see them, you know, every, every they, you know, they come along every few years, and um, they really stand out, and people are drawn to them. And to the exclusion, unlike single-player games, where people sort of play them for a few months and they sort of move on after that, but they but they but they play them through. If you're going to do something that everybody else does, you know, n literally almost nobody is going to play it. I mean, I remember going to see a game that I really enjoyed in single-player. I, I went to try multiplayer, and it was a big AAA Xbox 360 release. There were literally eight people playing. Uh, online in the world, eight, and you, the work that goes into this is crazy. But look, it was—I honestly, I think it was the fault of the people who made it, or the people who asked them to, or demanded they make it, because it was. Why am I going to leave my Call of Duty Deathmatch, which is so polished, and I have friends playing, and I've spent all this investment, and I've gone to to go play this guy's Deathmatch? I just don't think there's a there's a there there, unless you have something different to offer.